Hey everyone, it's July 3rd and if you're like me you have the day off from work so I hope you guys are enjoying it. It looks pretty sunny outside here in DC. I'm about to go outside myself. Um, in the last video maybe I scared some people just with uh, all the safety issues that we might have had as Peace Corps volunteers in Guinea and again I just want to reiterate I don't think Peace, Peace Corps Guinea or Guinea is an unsafe uh, program or country to be in. It's a developing country. Um, of course, there are going to be issues. Of course, there are going to be concerns that you might not find in an urban setting. Uh, but again, I think Guinea is pretty safe in comparison to a lot of other places. I mean, certainly I lived in LA for four years and I've been um, even to San Francisco here in DC. Um, even in my own neighborhood in DC, I actually don't even walk around at night. I always take a taxi or an or an Uber to get to my own neighborhood just because uh, the bus stop, <laughs> or the distance from the bus stop to my house is a little dangerous. I feel like so again, you know, you can there there are places of concern all over the world, and there are places where bad things can happen all over the world. But I do want to just go over some tips. Um, some of these I've repeated before, but just some tips on how to be safe and how to at least feel safe. So in my video, I talked about, you know, petty crime and serious crime and even uh, sexual assault. So let's go on petty crime. Say you're worried about um, people stealing from you or something like that. You know, minor things. I got a bucket stolen from me. Um, volunteers in other countries have been mugged even more seriously. And I would suggest just have your important things uh, locked up, actually. Uh, Peace Corps country houses have safes and it's inside these safes where you can put a lot of money, a lot of American dollars, um, your passport, uh, anything important that that you think you won't need in the village, just important documents, um, important jewelry even. Uh, and you can lock it up in the safe and no one's going to touch it there. So I had several hundred dollars in my safe at the Peace Corps house and I always thought like, wow, if someone actually ever broke into my home or robbed me, um, I would always have a stash of money somewhere safe um, for my traveling, for my vacation, anything else, along with my credit cards too, because you're not using a credit card in the village, that's for sure. Uh, on my personal self, I had a money belt, a wallet, I had money in my shoe sometimes, I had money in my bags. I had money stashed around my house and the whole idea and I was just thinking of all these different possibilities when I first uh, went to Guinea it was like wow if someone like tried to rob me I could at least give him something very quickly my wallet it would have money in it you would think that was it you wouldn't search me for anything else and then but I would still have money elsewhere I would feel fine and you know even though uh, nobody was ever mugged in Guinea uh, none of the Peace Corps volunteers were ever mugged in Guinea um, you know that could happen anywhere just comply give them something and you know they're they'll be on their way very quickly for that issue I talked about with my carpenter stealing a lot of my money and it getting it became a very difficult situation to get my money back and also my my furniture back uh, that one I suggest if you're going to be paying for a large amount of stuff like say furniture or a fence um, actually pay in advance instead so give maybe half or a third of the money and say, hey, I'll give you the rest of the money at the end. Um, that way, just it's kind of like an incentive. And also, um, just uh, if anything like that does happen, check with your regional coordinator just to make sure you're following um, policies and you're doing things that are safe too. The, the chances of someone breaking into your home are actually pretty low. Again, uh, Peace Corps fits all your houses and your huts with metal grill um, frames and and so uh, like it's you can't even open those and the doors either have two locks or you actually have multiple doors that have locks um, for for me the the reason I had uh, a snake get into my house was because I'd only locked my exterior door which had a little bit of a gap between it and the floor so the snake could just slither in um, but if I had been a little bit smarter and less impatient, I would have locked, you know, both my doors and then nothing would have got in. And that's how most Peace Corps houses are. 
Um, again, like all the windows are, it should be able to close completely, fully, can be locked even though you'll have metal grills out. Um, nobody else will have the keys to your house except typically like your site coordinator, like your someone who's your partner at your, at your site. Um, my principal had the key because he owned the house. <laughs> And then um, no one else did either, but at least they knew where to get a key. Say you had to be evacuated from your site, uh, Peace Corps will find a way to either get you to the nearest um, large city or they'll come pick you up in a Peace Corps vehicle. Or if there's a super big emergency, you have to be evacuated right away by helicopter, which um, usually all the embassies or at least there's like a military base nearby that is partnered with the embassy. They can send a helicopter and a helicopter pad is always identified in your village, at least where a helicopter can land. Um, I don't think they've ever really been used um, because an emergency has never been that dire, but it's still a possibility. Um, communication is a really big deal if you for keeping safe and keeping um, just in check with the rules and where everyone else is. Make sure whenever you go on a trip, like for me, I would go biking. I biked a lot and I would bike for hours at a time. And sometimes I go spend the night somewhere else, either like in a village, just have buddies where I could spend the night at, or I'd go to another Peace Corps volunteer site and spend the night. I'd always communicate with my site coordinator, my police commissioner, and um, sometimes I would send a text to like my regional coordinator just saying, hey, I'm leaving my site. Um, I don't have work. Like I, you know, I only talk certain days. I don't have work the next day. I'm leaving my site. Um, I'll be back at this time, and I'll send a text again when I come back. It's just that sort of communication that lets people know where you are, um, lets them know that you make it to a certain destination safely, and lets them know that when you're back, um, just so they know, like they just want to be sure you're safe and sound. Because again, like. Even though when I was biking, I was never gonna have any trouble. Where I biked, you know, I was really out in the villages. There were there weren't any and there weren't any bandits. <laughs> um, that's a possibility, but uh, where I was, there was no bandits. There was no wild animals. Uh, Guinea's actually poached most of its crazy wild animals. Um, sure, there were snakes, but those are off the trail in the branches. Um, and again, they don't like people. And uh, but. Biking can still be a little a little treacherous. There are a lot of hills, a lot of mountains. Your bike can go, your tire can go flat. And even though you have a kit, um, you might run out of materials if you're on a, a pretty rough patch of road. Uh, and so you could be stuck somewhere just having to walk your bike for miles and miles. Um, that has happened. <laughs> and, you know, it's a, it's, it can be tough sometimes, but you'll get through it. But again, it would just communication lets people know where you are and maybe they'll they'll try and get a hold of you or at least they'll ask. They'll, you typically your police commissioner or your principal will have a lot of numbers and make, like I had an instance where they, um, there was somebody on a motorcycle driving past me on a bike and he ended up notifying my police commissioner for me, things like that. And it's, it's good to know, just good to keep in constant co communication with others. As for your health, um, just make sure your food is warm or at least you're preparing your food. We washed our food and we washed a lot of our vegetables and fruits and uh, very well with bleach water and you kind of let it sit and then you scrub it. Um, it. That's just if you don't know who's preparing it and then cooking just always make sure it's hot enough to kill any bacteria. You know I got really sick because I wasn't I wasn't cooking that food and it was massively produced and I don't know how long I've been sitting there. Just better maintenance, better um, op supervision, I guess. Food can last for a while. Make sure you know how long food can last. What you can do to preserve it. You can always like reheat food with um, just to a certain temperature, or at least uh, cook it in oil. Oil and salt will keep things a little bit longer. You can preserve things that need to be kept cool by putting them in bags and then put putting those in bowls filled with water. And typically, if you're in the Futa Jalan region, we all have houses that have tiled floors. So water, um, a bag with the food in it, put in a bowl filled with water on the tiled floor will actually keep pretty cool in the shade. 
if you want to be really fucking bougie, you can uh, pay your uh, local cafe. All the local cafes typically have refrigerators. And so you can pay them to run a generator all day to keep something cool. I know some volunteers thought about doing that for, for cakes. Uh, just an idea. I would recommend learning how to prepare food, like get a cookbook. Peace Corps has a cookbook for like how to cook in the bush. But if you want to bring something along, go ahead. I know I did. I actually left it in Guinea. I think it's in the regional house. It's a large red a cookbook. And I actually used it a lot for um, dishes with vinegar and uh, sugar. Like, you know, just finding different ways to preserve things. Um, but it was really cool. There's a lot of ways to make bread, too, that you can use a local bakery for. But yeah, just learn how to prepare food. Learn when food could go bad. Um, and uh, just, just keep a good thought up in you about like how long has this food been out um, are there a lot of flies here will that cause me trouble how I'm preparing the food you know ask the right questions to yourself don't just get things because you need them for a certain dish you know you can always buy what I did like you know baby crackers and get peanut butter and that's a, a pretty safe dish um, but it is nice to make things on your own sometimes with taxis and automobiles in general I mean like I said before automobile accidents are where that causes Peace Corps volunteers a lot of harm in all of its countries the entire portfolio it just comes with the the game for developing uh, for working in developing countries I think Peace Corps prefers if you always try to buy two seats they'll give you enough money to get two seats um, in a taxi and Peace Corps would always love for you to get the middle seats or um, the front passenger one uh, just wherever like feels the safest, I guess. I was always small as a Peace Corps volunteer, so I could fit in, in a lot of different arrangements. Um, but I did use a handkerchief to kind of block out fumes when I was in a really old car. I never got super sick from being in a, a taxi, but I did get nauseous. You know, they're, they're jostling around a lot. Um, again, sometimes the fumes are bothersome. But they they do keep up the cars pretty well. They're all really, typically a Mercedes. There's a lot of Mercedes taxis, which is kind of fun. Uh, never get on a moto. Again, I've talked about this before. You will get fired if you get on a moto. Everyone will talk about it, and you will be sad when you get fired. Um, but there was a volunteer who got burned from getting on a moto, and uh, <laughs> that's that's a that's really hard to hide when you have a, a large burn on your leg. Um, always try to stick away from the roads when you're walking, just a little bit off the path, um, just because you don't know how well a driver is paying attention, um, you don't know how well he can control a vehicle, especially if there's a lot of dust. You know, the dirt, the roads and the tires, there might not be enough traction, they could slide pretty easily. So just keep a safe distance. Um, when I was biking and I had to share the road with a taxi, I always got over onto the side. Uh, just for my own safety. Um, let's see, I think th that's pretty much it for just some tips on how to keep safe and how to keep healthy, you know, um, they're basic tips. Lock your doors, uh, know your surroundings, uh, communicate very well, um, don't go out at night by yourself, go out with a group of other volunteers. Uh, you guys will never get drunk because you can't afford it, one. <laughs> and the alcohol is usually warm, too. There's not enough ice to make it cool, so you're not going to typically enjoy getting drunk. Um, but always go out with other volunteers. Always tell people where you're going, and numbers, uh, areas where you'll be, uh, names. Uh, don't stay out too late. Uh, just, you know, avoid mosquitoes, one. <laughs> uh, and snakes, too. But snakes aren't usually in the major cities anyways, and they're actually not even in the village either. Um, I just had a few run-ins because I was lucky, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, Peace Corps, it's not, it's not a place where, don't, don't think you're not going to get, you know, a few cuts and bruises. Um, that's not what it is at all. Just be prepared to have what you need to recover from those cuts and bruises or at least to avoid them as much as possible 
you will have a first aid kit. Make sure the medicine is up to date. Make sure you can take the medicine. Uh, I know a lot of volunteers have issues with mefloquine. I never took it, but it, mefloquine has psychotic, uh, psychotic um, problems, so side effects. Uh, talk to your Peace Corps medical officer about maybe like cutting up the, the pills into smaller dosages, so dosages or find a way to take Doxy. But know that the trade-off with Doxy is that your skin becomes sensitive to sunlight and you can't um, really take uh, any dairy products with it without getting a very upset stomach. Uh, communicate, uh, keep a journal of, of things that, you know, make you feel good, um, or just like recipes. If you're having like, or just even your own health, like if you have a rash that keeps getting worse and worse, make sure you have a journal just so you can share with your Peace Corps medical officer. Um, so then they're not asking really silly questions like, oh, like you're coming to them with a broken hand and they're like, oh, are you pregnant? You know, <laughs> you never know with the, some of the medical um, doctors in country. But yeah, just uh, Peace Corps will do what they can to inform you and try and listen as best you can. Don't be cocky, don't be arrogant, saying like, oh, you've been in another country before on study abroad, you'll be fine here. No, you know, listen. Listen, pay attention, and learn, and be cautious. An excess of caution is, I think, a good thing in this case. All right, uh, happy fourth, guys. And if you have any questions or concerns, uh, please write them in the comments. Take care.